This is how to port and polish a head on a Predator 212. This is the Hemi version. So you want to undo the air filter. So we're going to back the gas line off with carburetor. And always just clamp it with some pliers just so we don't lose a bunch of fuel. And then we'll plug it with something just to keep the fuel from leaking out while we're working on it. So now that we've got the fuel line disconnected from the carburetor, we need to disconnect the springs. So we've got our thin little spring here that will disconnect. Okay. And we need to disconnect our little throttle control arm. So This one's a little tricky, you gotta be careful just because the little plastic control mechanism is fragile. I have broke a piece off before, but the control arm just came right out. Now we can take our carburetor off. All right, to get the head off, we'll start with the four bolts for the valve cover. And if you want to reuse the gasket for the valve cover, just be careful taking it off. It will tear pretty easy. Okay, and as you can see, we did tear the gasket. It is a thin little paper gasket. We'll just use some gasket maker and make a new seal all right and there's also one bolt for the throttle mechanism that we need we've got four 12 millimeter bolts holding the head in we've got two outside of the valve cover and then we've got two in the valve cover they're up under the rockers here Okay, so we got all of the all four of the bolts loose, and we can just pull the head off here. Okay, head's off. Now we've got the head off. We need to disassemble it. We're going to start by taking the lash caps off the top of the valves here. And just be careful with these. They are small, real easy to lose. Right, and now we need to get the valves out. So the retainers are real, real easy to get off on these Predators. You just take and push down on the retainer and slide it over so that you got this big hole here. We're just gonna slide the end of the valve stem out of that hole. And we just slide it over. And there is a spring under there, so be real careful. You know, keep constant tension on it and it just comes right loose. And see, there's your retainer, there's your spring, and the valve will slide right on out of there. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. So we're just gonna cock the retainer to the side, slid right out, and push the valve out. Now we're gonna take the rockers off. By these little pins, there's a clip on each end of the pin, and we're, you only have to take one of the clips off. We're gonna take the clip off that's closer to the wall here because you can't slide this pin towards that wall and get it out completely. We're gonna to have to slide the pin towards the inside. Now there are tools for this, but I found just a adjustable wrench to work just fine. 
Okay, so there goes the clip. We can slide the pin out, pins out, and rocker comes right off. This is gonna be a, a pretty mild uh, head port. What I'm essentially gonna do is just take off any hard edges. So we can see in the intake side over here, we got a real sharp edge there. And it's actually got some little dingleberries hanging off. Now, um, so we're just gonna get really sharp edges, smooth them out, help the flow. Also on the exhaust side, we've got some sharp edges as well here around the valve guides. We're gonna smooth that down. I got a majority of the metal out using the die grinder. Um, we are going to finish it up with a Dremel tool. Uh, just get the, you know, kind of fine tune it, smooth it out a little more. As you can see, we got quite a bit of metal out. Now, uh, I'd suggest always using, you know, a face mask and some eye protection. You know, when I was younger, I used to not use it, you know, just wanted to get it done. But, I mean, these are little bitty, tiny little metal needles. You don't want those in your eyes. And after grinding on stuff, I always had, always had metal taste in my mouth for a couple hours afterwards. And you just don't want that stuff in your body. And you'll, you'll appreciate it later in life. Now we're going to use the Dremel to kind of fine tune it, uh, smooth down the edges a little more, and uh, kind of give it that brushed finish for the intake side. And uh, we'll use a uh, polishing wheel and uh, some paste to get that mirror finish on the exhaust side. Also, I'm gonna take a little wire wheel and get all the carbon built up out of the exhaust side before we do all that. I really like the little handheld extension for your Dremel. It helps you really get in there. Um, now, like I said before, I didn't take off too much. I'm mainly just smoothing down the edges here. Um, this is just a kind of a beginner's guide. You can do your own thing. Uh, this will just get you started. Uh, you can decide how much you want to take out, where you want to take it from. So one really important part is watch out for your valve seats here while you're grinding. Now, with the rotary tools, it's real easy to forget about the chuck and it is spinning and a lot of times it has um, some grip on it and you can damage the seat here. Um, now, if you damage the seat to a point to where it's not repairable, you've ruined your head. So I've pretty much taken off all the metal I'm going to take off. I do still need to do a little fine tuning, sand it, finish sanding it down a little bit and uh, polishing the exhaust side here. But as you can see, we started off with a sharp edge here around the valve guides, but I smoothed that down. It's a smooth transition now it's here on the intake side. Also did the same on the exhaust side smooth that hard edge down so it's a smooth transition now any sharp edges like this pad from factory will inhibit flow it'll create turbulence inhibit flow and these smooth edges smoothing it down will you know help with that flow now I did port then take in the exhaust a little bit. I didn't take off too much metal, but I did port it all the way down through the entire length of it. Um, just to help the flow a little bit, but you don't want to overdo it because you can take off too much metal. And the issue with taking off too much metal is you can reduce the exhaust velocity, so how fast, or the intake velocity, so how fast that air is moving in or out. 
so I just did a real mild uh, port here uh, just took off a little bit of material just to get a little extra flow but I didn't overdo it because I have overdone it in the past now some people you know talk about you know some people talk about gasket matching um, so gasket matching is where you take your gasket you put it on the head and if there's any metal hanging out past the gasket on the inside you grind that metal off but every predator I've had the gasket actually projects out farther than the head does so I always actually cut the gaskets I'll grind the gaskets down because you don't want that air hitting the lip on the gasket you're gonna reduce flow again so all that porting and stuff you did is just went to waste because that gasket's blocking that flow now on the intake side you can see I left the gasket on while I was porting and the gasket matches perfectly with the head here I always lap the valves after doing a head port just because we got the head off and the valves out anyway why not and if I happen to uh, scuff up the seats while I was porting it always helps just to make sure those valves are sealing real well again now there's a lot of debate online about what's what the best finish is um, for the inside of the head here you know they talk about dimpled uh, mirror finish as a um, brush finish and from the information I've read um, I decided to go with a mirror finish here on the exhaust side and I'm gonna go with a kind of brushed finish on the intake side so the exhaust side I'm gonna go with a mirror finish just to help prevent carbon buildup and the intake side here I'm going with that brush finish because it is carbureted um, still want to keep the air and the fuel atomized real well and you know there's some talk of, of droplets forming with a mirror finish on the intake side whether that actually happens or not I can't say but I'm just gonna leave a little bit of texture on the intake side to keep that air and uh, fuel atomized so something else I think people miss uh, quite often um, you know we ground our gasket down here to match our head and the uh, diameter but a lot of people don't think about their exhaust so a lot of these aftermarket exhausts they come with just a plain old round hole while your head is not round so also uh, usually gasket match the exhaust as well just to make sure we're not trying to force this kind of odd shape into a round hole and that'll help with flow as well but luckily I think this exhaust the hole's just so big there's no metal sticking out past the gasket but I'll double check it before we put it back on so I was just gonna go over some of the tools I used while porting this head so I started out with my die grinder a little aluminum cutting bit now this does take off a lot of metal really fast so you have to be really careful um, while using this you may not even really need to use this you can just use your dremel tool and there's less chance of making a mistake or um, you know taking off too much for the for porting the runners there uh, mainly use these little sanding drums uh, there's different grits that you can put on there uh, a couple different size sanding drums just to get in all the little nooks and crannies also use some stones some people are against using stones but they work good here or they work good for me and get just getting some of the the sharp uh, the small little cr nooks and crannies also used uh, you know our little of course this one's got uh some compound on it but used our little polishing wheels 
to uh, polish it up at the end, polish up the exhaust side and our uh, polishing paste. Now, you know, this is, this isn't a fast process. It takes some time. So, you know, don't expect to do it in, you know, 30 minutes, an hour. Um, this takes multiple hours if you're gonna do it right and really uh, fine tune everything. Um, so just be patient with it, you know, take your time.